It may not sound like a hard question, but oftentimes people have a really hard time understanding the answer. Such a simple question, what is the gospel? But this is seriously one of the most important questions that you could ever ask in your life. Because at the end of the answer is an entirely different life. To put it plainly, the gospel is the good news of Jesus. But what does that mean? Why is it important? Who cares? All those are super valid questions. But before I can answer those questions, there's a question that I need you to keep in mind first as we go forward. Where have you found your hope? What have you put your hope in? Is it possessions? Is it money? Is it relationships? Is it family? Is it friends? Do you hope for a new car, a new job, a raise? What is it that you put your hope in and what are you hoping for? The book of Ecclesiastes puts life into perspective in a very hard way. It details the escapades of King Solomon, who had literally every single thing that he could have possibly wanted. He had hundreds of wives. He had all the money he could ever need. He had power. He was well respected as a king in his region. By every single measure of society, even today, he was very successful. And not only that, but he also was considered one of the most wise people in all of history. Yet despite all of these things, Solomon opens up the book of Ecclesiastes like this. Absolute futility, says the teacher. Absolute futility. Everything is futile. What does a person gain for all of his efforts that he labors at under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. Ecclesiastes 1, 2 through 4. Let me ask you a question. How much money do you think you need to be fulfilled in this life? How many possessions? How many friends? How many family members? Do you want a wife? Do you want kids? If you don't receive all of these things, will your life actually matter to you anymore? The reality is that so many people tie themselves up with the need to have all of these things. They believe by having all of these things, their life will be complete. However, like Solomon would say, everything is meaningless. Relationships crumble. Money is spent, houses burn down, cars crash, even your own body one day will get sick and die. So I ask you again, what do you put your hope in? There is one thing that will not pass away in this life, and that is the Word of God. Jesus Christ is called both the Word of God and God in John chapter 1. Jesus says in Luke chapter 21 verse 33 that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Now with that, I would say that it's worth looking at what Jesus has said. So what is he saying that's so important for you today here watching this video? We'll get to that in just a moment, but first there's something that's really important that I need to talk about. Because the truth is, it hasn't always been like this. You see, God created the heavens and the earth and everything in it and everyone in it. When God made the first two people, Adam and Eve, he gave them the greatest opportunity of all mankind to be in the presence of God fully walking in the garden with every single thing they could possibly need or desire, all the food that they could want. They had a relationship with each other. They had a relationship with God. And they had authority over the entire earth. They had literally everything they could possibly need or want or desire. They had no sickness, no pain, no sorrow, no death. But all of that was not enough for them. They were tempted by evil to try to be like God so that they could discern for themselves what is good and what is evil. You see, in eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they weren't just trying to gain a knowledge of what good and evil is for knowledge's sake, but instead they were trying to become like God so that they could choose for themselves what is good and what is evil. This was unacceptable. And because of this rift that they have caused in their relationship with God, this sin that they have committed against the law of God, they had to be expelled from the garden. After being expelled from the perfect place in the presence of God, they came into a world of perpetual death. This type of death is the result of sinning against God. Because let's be honest here, we're selfish people. I'm selfish. I want things that I want. Look at your life. You've been selfish at some point or another with someone else, and at some point or another, you have tried to steal God's glory from him. If you've ever believed that you don't need God, that you can be self-sufficient on your own without God, that you can create your own reality, that you can manifest things into existence, then you are committing the exact same sin that Adam and Eve committed against God. If you've ever tried to qualify your actions that go against the laws of God as being not that bad and certainly not evil, then you are also committing the exact same sin as Adam and Eve. And the price for that sin is death. 
So now, here we are. A world of death where everything is meaningless. Where people sin against God, and because of their sin, they die. Now here is what Jesus' eternal word says about that. In John 12, 44 through 50, it says, Jesus cried out, The one who believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And the one who sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me would not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and doesn't receive my sayings has this as his judge. The word I have spoken will judge him on the last day. For I have not spoken on my own, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a command to say everything I have said. I know that this command is eternal life. So the things that I speak, I speak just as the Father has told me. Jesus Christ, who was and always is God, who is the Word of God, came into this world to save the world from their sin. The cycle of death that started with Adam and Eve was broken when Jesus Christ died on the cross as a sacrifice for that sin, so that we would no longer have to bear the punishment of death for our sins. Because now, God's command is eternal life. After we pass on from this world that is broken and futile and everything is meaningless, we will have eternal life with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You cannot take your money with you. You cannot take your possessions with you. The only thing that will matter when you die is whether or not you said yes to Jesus. Because once again, he doesn't need to judge you. You already have your judge if you say no to Jesus. You get to have a choice. You can either continue going down the path you've been going down, pursuing all kinds of meaningless things in order to try to fill yourself up, rejecting Jesus, and ultimately walking into eternal death, or you can accept Jesus Christ for who he said he is, God in the flesh, your Lord and your Savior, and you can start eternal life today. In doing so, you will experience life in a completely different way. The hope and the joy that you will receive from this new relationship with Jesus Christ will be like nothing you have ever known. And your life will change forever. I know because I used to pursue all kinds of meaningless things, truly meaningless things, and they meant nothing to me. And they will never mean anything to me if I went back to those things. But now I have a hope in Jesus Christ. If you're ready to make the decision to follow Jesus Christ, to have a hope for tomorrow that does not fade away, I want you to type I'm ready in the comment section below so that we as a community can come together and surround you as you start your new Christian life. God bless you.